But to me, the message here with this tragedy is these planes are different than they were five or even ten years ago. They definitely are. And the funny thing is that, yeah, those seats, there's a lot of flame retardant uh, products going inside the airplane, making things survivable in, in uh, fires and such. But those seats are getting smaller and smaller, too. If you notice, as the width of those seats, they keep crunching them down so they can put more of them in every airplane mm -hmm. and make even more money. So the great thing is they're making it more safe and of course trying to prove the economics of the airplane. The cockpit, the, uh, I believe it's four pilots interviewed today by the Koreans, by the Americans. If you were in that room, what would you ask them about the technology in the cockpit? Well, you know, I think we're wondering that, uh, you know, maybe there's too much technology in the cockpit, and maybe there's too much of a reliance on technology. When we look at the, the Asiana crash, what we see is, you know, the failure of the glide scope. It wasn't failure. The glide scope was out, or the glide slope was out that day, and the pilots should be, have been doing a visual glide slope approach into the airport. And it seems like somebody wasn't picking up the cues that the glide slope was, was, they were on the wrong glide slope, they were on a low glide slope, and potentially going to, and ultimately did hit the ground before the mm -hmm. runway. And it, we see parallels to the Air France 447 flight where, you know, that, that Out was of the, Brazil. Yes, that was the Brazil to Paris flight, right, where we lost a pitot tube in the flight, which is a, as a air, tube. Air I mean, tube. Yeah, yeah, it gives you ram air pressure. Right. And the airplane doesn't know, the airplane's computer doesn't know how fast the airplane is moving, you know, through the air. And so the pilots were counter-reacting the airplane. The airplane it was in a stall. They should have pushed the nose over and gained speed to pull that out of that problem. And the, the pilots couldn't realize what was going on because they didn't have that good Interesting. Scarlett, jump in here. Is the bias yeah. then in the response to this crash to then load up the cockpit with more bells and whistles? No, I, I don't think so. I think that's the wrong answer, right? So what I think we need to do is make sure that we get the basic airmanship skills in the crew mm. so that they, they know how to fly airplanes well and they don't get stuck looking at computers all the time and not focusing on how the airplane is, is behaving. Well, I want to share with you a first-hand account of exactly what you're talking about. I had the chance yesterday afternoon to talk to Ben Levy, who was on this oh, flight, an cool. Asiana passenger. I remember he joined us tweets. from San Francisco. Yeah. Here's what he told me about some of the trauma on board flight 214. Have a listen. Of course, yes. I saw a lot of people injured. I mean, standing with the person next to me where he had a pretty big cut probably to his face um, and bleeding pretty heavily. A lot of people had nosebleeds. Um, I didn't see any open fracture per se, but of course a lot of, you know, uh, probably broken legs or uh, r broken ribs and head trauma is probably the majority of the injuries you're going to see or even neck or, or you know, spine injuries. Um, but as far as like seeing people hurt, yes, so a lot of people hurt, but somehow pretty much everybody in the back section of the plane was able to get out fairly quickly. Ben Levy, who's a venture capitalist out in San Francisco, was on this flight, mm -hmm. had taken it a number of times. And George, what stands out to me is the upshot here is he said so many people were able to get out. They were able to escape. He even yeah. said that he would fly it again. And he would, yes, Tom, send his children on the mm -hmm. flight again because he realizes that airline travel is much safer. Yeah, I think it was very impressive that the fuselage stayed mostly intact for that. Uh, it probably hit the runway at about 100 miles an hour stayed intact and preserved a lot of lives. I think it was pretty impressive. Uh... And there's this new rule where they have to evacuate in 90 seconds. This is mandated by the FAA, and this was put to the test. Yes, yes, actually. Tell us about this. And the Airbus A380 actually put this to the test as well, not in as harsh an environment. But all, yeah, all the airplanes seem to be able to evacuate the airplanes within a certain period of time. The Airbus A380 had some special challenges. It gets up to about 800 some people in that airplane. This one only had 300, but yeah, they. Uh, People are very motivated to get out of an airplane when there's fire and, and problems. Well, that's also a testament to crew training and how that's picked uh, yeah. up over the years Absolutely. as well. Uh, Captain Sully Sullenberger, the pilot of the U.S. Yes. Airways flight that he landed yes. safely on the Hudson River, spoke to Emily Chang on Bloomberg West yesterday about cockpit technology. Listen to what he said. Visual flight rules means that you have good enough visibility and cloud height that you can fly the airplane without reference to instruments to the runway. And of course, uh, especially as a pilot who might not have had as much particular experience in this particular type of airplane, having an electronic glide slope would have been a, a, an additional aid. So we don't know how important it is, but that's just one more bit of information that we know that they didn't have available to them. Yeah. George, there's some chatter out there that Asian pilots are more reluctant to hand fly airplanes than, say, American pilots. Is that a fair assessment? 
You know, honestly, I can't tell you whether or not Asian pilots are more reluctant or not. What I can tell you is when we look at the industry, we see Europe and, um, and the U.S. having very strong aviation cultures back from World War II, right? We put a lot of men in airplanes, right. took them out of those fighter jets and those bombers, put them in the civilian air, air fleet. They've got a lot of seat of the pants flying skills. Or our pilots come up through general aviation, which is quite robust here in the U.S. They don't have those large militaries those paths, in Asia, and they don't have brilliant. those big general aviation businesses. Okay, well, I'm going to cut right to the chase. You're the pro here with Bloomberg Industries. Would you have one of your kids fly on an international airplane? You want them to fly with somebody, male or female, who's landed on an aircraft carrier, don't you? I mean, I, I think so. Right? I think that's uh, they're just some great. Do you want to jump you know, in, skills. Richard Falkenrath, with us? I mean, it, you, my basic take is NTSB is is like the agency everybody else in government ought to behave like. They do a good job, as does the FAA. Air travel has gotten much safer over the last 20 years, but the safety factor can never be reduced to zero. Understood. I mean, yeah. the, this reminds me of a great 1980 book by Charles Perrault called Normal Accidents, which says it is impossible with a technically complex system to drive the error rate to zero. The thing I would worry about is general aviation. I mean, over 90% of the fatalities that occur from air travel in the United States come from private planes flown by amateurs. The ones flown by professionals are by far the safest, right. and then commercial aviation, the safest of the subset. Is there a single group or a single crash or single fire that changed safety in this country for airlines and the way we fly? There was this period from 1994 to 1997 when we had one crash every three months, and people said enough. I mean, that, that, that was when the FAA really began cracking down That's they on, grew up. Uh, on a series of different things. And this is a systems approach. It's not a single, there's no single feature right. you can point to that... But, well, no, I don't mean to cut you off. Please continue. No, there's no single feature you can point to that makes the whole system safer, but they've done something on every front, and they've done it in cooperation with the industry.